In today's Neville Goddard conversation, I'd like to explore with you two success stories when it comes to others appearing to reflect true self-acceptance. Number one, from a recent comment made in the last video that I released on Thursday, as well as a personal story. And I trust that you too have been witnessing the appearances of others reflecting true self-acceptance, more so each day, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. So I trust you'll enjoy today's conversation and benefit greatly from it. Today's conversation mind map is titled, From the Premise of True Self-Acceptance, Others Appear That Way. Today's conversation was inspired by a comment that I received in the previous conversation, which I would like to relate our previous conversation on Thursday to this conversation today. And so the comment, I pinned it on the top. You will see it. I'll put a link in the description to the video on Thursday. She says, I started working with residents at the prison here as a life coach. My experience so far has been what I would call in the past unrealistically great. The process of coaching has been so smooth. I've been able to think ideally of all the people I meet, and they have reflected my thinking. I'm also growing a lot as a communicator and coach, and seeing the people I work with grow. I'm very grateful for everything I've learned through this channel. I know that before watching this channel, I may have not even accepted the opportunity to work with the residents because of all sorts of beliefs. Even how I ended up getting the opportunity was so amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your story and inspiring this conversation today, which I trust will benefit everyone greatly. You have been embodying the philosophy and thus are now an inspiration of being as you are, being that I am. So what I mean by that is true self-acceptance, being as I am, means you are already that which you might perhaps seek for. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By acknowledging that I am, true self-acceptance, Others appear to reflect, as Neville said here. Change your conception of yourself, and you will automatically change the world in which you live. What he's speaking of is conception of yourself. Who you are is love. And so when she mentioned all sorts of beliefs, as we discussed in Thursday's video, this is a form of living meditation. That's the way life is experienced, in which whatever appears reveal the beliefs that are identified with. And if the beliefs identified with are not from the premise of true self-acceptance, knowing that I am to be love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, then right there we have an opportunity to disentangle our mind from the evidence of the senses, to abide in the feeling of being the love you are, being as I am. This changes the conception of yourself. The concept of self, is it a true representation of thy true self? That's what I mean by true self-acceptance. Now, there were two lectures that Neville put out. Both of them that I found were titled The Coin of Heaven. So I don't know if one of the lectures was part of another lecture or they were both titled Coin of Heaven. So I pulled some notes here to articulate the point that as we change our inner conversations, our thinking, from the premise of not being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, to being love, happiness, peace, 
bliss fulfillment now. So does it manifest as the outer expressions of life. This includes our relationships, personal relationships, business relationships, career. And so this is what she was experiencing. This also reminds me of Ho'oponopono, Dr. Hugh Led. I'm going to link in the description to a series of videos where he discusses it. And I trust that you'll find that to be very beneficial. So with the gifts that were bestowed to humanity, we can acknowledge the being that we are and relate ideally from the premise of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, to reflect in and as our relationships. So a personal example I'll get into in a moment, but let's read what he says here. He says there are two sides to the coin. Again, the coin of heaven. We are told in the 50th Psalm, to he who orders his conversations aright, I will show the salvation of God. So we're speaking of inner conversations, inner speech. He says, now, there was a work that came out in the first century, just about the time that our evangelists were gathering together our Gospels. It's called the Hermetica. And in this work, today we have a translation in four volumes by Walter Scott. So he mentions that there are two gifts that God gave to humanity. These are mind and speech. The Hermetica also states that these two gifts are equal to immortality. That I am, immortality. And so if one uses this gifts rightly, it states that they will differ in nothing from the immortals. Now, he says that the Bible speaks much of this gift but the word is not called always speech. It's called the way. It's called the path. It's called the tread. Here is the same word I've just translated as conversation from the 50th Psalm. To he who orders his conversations aright, I will show the salvation of God. And so he says, all day long, the individual is thinking even if they're not aware of what they're thinking, it reflects as the outer appearances of life. And so then one knows what they have been thinking. He says, and if they think, they think in words, and they're talking. They're carrying on inner conversations with themselves. So this could be inner conversations with ourselves in which we speak to ourselves, or it could be inner conversations that we have with others in our mind's eye. We're imagining having conversations with others. And sure enough, they are appearing that way. And the pattern of their appearance could be quite inauthentically repetitive until we discover this conversation that we are having with them and change that conversation to be from the premise of being Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. True self-acceptance, which then changes, as he says, our conception of ourself. And then we witness the changes in the world in which we live. So a personal experience was, I remember a friend who would appear a particular way. What I mean by that was, I would be in my flow. So, as I always mention, I make flow a priority. So, I would do whatever to be as I am, be in my flow. And then we would hang out. And then we would engage in particular conversations in which it appeared that this person was trying to bring me out of the flow. Although at that time I was thinking, they didn't know that they were doing this. They were doing this subconsciously. They were subconsciously trying to bring me out of my flow. Now consider that I'm imagining this. I'm imagining that they are trying to bring me out of my flow. And so I would experience this inner resistance being around them. And by the end of our conversation, I would not be in my flow. 
And then I would think to myself, the next day I got to do this or I got to do that. And I like to do it from the premise of being as I am in flow. And so what happened then is that sequence would play out. The next day, I would not appear to be in flow. And then I would say, this person that I'm hanging out with, every time I interact with them, it's like they appear and drain my energy. And then I'm no longer in my flow. And then I experience not being in flow the next day. And so I realized that I was imagining the entire experience. I was imagining conversations with them where I would have these conversations prior to meeting with them while I was in my flow, that they were going to appear in this way, which we could call flow restricting. And sure enough, they appeared that way. And so what did I do then? I started to acknowledge that this was a recurring pattern. Why was it a recurring pattern with this particular friend? And I wasn't experiencing this as a recurring pattern with other friends. This one particular friend, I would have this one particular pattern physically experienced. And so I changed that conversation. I would imagine myself, after the interactions, being in flow, feeling the bliss, after the interactions, and then I would feel the next day energized, being in my flow. And so I was changing the relationship that I had with this particular person. I was doing it within. And then they ended up appearing that way. And then sure enough, I would hang out with them. And then I would notice that I would still be in my flow. The conversations would go in a direction, which we could call flow-based conversations. And then after the conversations, I would still be in my flow. And the next day, I would still be in my flow. And so he says, we have given you a system by which you change it. For those who haven't heard what I say, you walk tracks. You are standing forever in the presence of an infinite and eternal energy. And from this energy, all things proceed. But they proceed according to pattern. So I was aware of the pattern. And he says, energy is moving in a certain pattern. And you determine the pattern that it takes. For you actually lay down these tracks within you. That energy flows over by the use of your inner conversations. This energy, I call it now mind, follows the tracks laid down in our own inner talking. So now is where all the power is. That's where the power is now. And although a pattern was playing out quite persistently, now is the opportunity to reimagine it from the premise of being that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I am that now regardless of appearances. Even if I look for visible signs, proof, validation, or confirmation, and it doesn't appear that way, I acknowledge that the looking for is happening in mind. So it is ideal then to capture the feeling of being that I am, regardless of appearances. We do this by first disentangling our mind from the evidence of the senses. Be still and know that I am. That I am transcends the beliefs in mind that are not true and authentic to who I truly am. True self-acceptance. And by being still, we may find that we automatically capture the feeling of of being that love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By being still for a moment, could be five seconds, could be 30 seconds, a minute, we're able to capture the feeling, true authentic feeling of being, love. And then we find it easier to reimagine the relationships as we know thyself and thus appearances of relationships 
I find automatically arise as images in mind of the relationship appearing to be in a way that is ideal. Or we can create an inner conversation with the other person from the premise of being that love. What would it look like if it was true? And so a conversation that I have in my imagination with clients, them saying, could be something like, I always feel wonderful around you. I always experience enormous amount of clarity when I'm around you. I experience like I can be who I truly am around you. And so these conversations that I generate in my mind are conversations that are of true self-acceptance. Because as he said, change your conception of yourself. Know thyself as being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And change your conception, which means the concept of yourself to be one with the being you truly are. And as he said, you will automatically change the world in which you live. And so being as I am, what do they reflect? The being that you are, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, more and more so each day in the various relationships, personal relationships, friendships, business relationships, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. And we always have the opportunity because now is where all the power is. Now is the opportunity to apply consciously the two gifts of mind and speech. Mind is in essence blank. One could be placing unknowingly various thoughts in mind, that speech, from the premise of not being that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and thus not true self-acceptance. What is being encouraged here is true self-acceptance. By inner speech, we carry on conversations with ourselves from the premise of being that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And mind is purified. The identification to particular beliefs that result in experiences that are not reflections of true self-acceptance are released. And so we know what state we're in based on our thoughts in relation to appearances, what we're emotionally relating to appearances, our behaviors in relation to appearances. We know what state we're in. What we truly desire is to know thyself, actualize thyself, and transcend self. And so what she shared in the comment was a perfect example of this. She continues to know thyself and actualize that self as a wonderful service and also transcending what appears as the individual self to reflect the true nature of thyself as a wonderful, harmonious relationships and the appearances of transformation in particular areas where one might not believe that the two gifts bestowed upon humanity, mind and speech, work. Those are conditions in mind to say, this only works in this scenario or this particular kind of relationships, but it won't work in these other relationships. Those are beliefs in mind in which they say, this works in this scenario, but not in this other scenario. And so we disentangle our mind from the evidence of the senses by being still and knowing that I am. This can be done real time in the moment. And in that particular scenario where I brought up my story, it was challenging to do it real time in the moment, to disentangle my mind from the evidence of the senses. I disentangle from this interpretation in relation to the senses. If it's challenging for you, no shame, nor condemnation. What I did was, after the conversation, I realized that. I realized that this is what was appearing, an appearance of lack of true self-acceptance. So this was appearing. Now is where all the power is. I'm releasing identification to engaging in that former conversation of my friend appearing in a way that is not true and authentic 
to true being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I reimagine our relationship to be from the premise of being, that love, that I am. And so the relationship began to reappear in that way. And it was liberating for me. I realized that if I could do this in this particular relationship, then I could do this anywhere with whatever kind of relationship. And so in the earlier stages, I thought this information only applied in particular kind of relationship scenarios. And then I realized that the application of the two gifts, mind and speech, can be applied in any relationships because I proved it to myself in a relationship where I once experienced as extremely challenging to the point where I almost believed that it was impossible. And so I released identification. And so I recommend watching Thursday's video because I likened this entire experience of life to a meditation. And what I mean by that is when I meditate and I do a Vipassana style meditation, if anyone is interested, I'll link in the description to a video of the process that I do. I essentially focus on my breathing and if distractions arise in mind or if physical distractions arise around me like noises, etc., I don't identify with it. I just bring my attention back to my breathing in and out. And so if a thought arises in mind, I let it be. If an emotion arises, I let it be. If a physical distraction arises, I don't identify with it. I let it be. And as I continue to do that, sure enough, I feel it. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The acknowledgement of that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. During the meditation. Now in day-to-day -day experiences, over the years it became more and more like this as well. So as I'm going about my day-to-day -day initiatives, I'm aware if I'm about to become identified with a thought that is not from the premise of being that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I'm aware if I'm resisting the emotions as a result of belief identification. And by that I mean emotions experienced a particular way through belief identification. I allow the emotions to be. And I'm able to remain in what we've been discussing from James Allen's book, The Heavenly Life. He referred to it as the divine center. And sure enough, mind is purified. So mind is purified during meditation Mind is purified in day-to-day -day life by not identifying with thoughts that are not true and authentic. And mind is purified also through the conscious use of speech by ordering the conversations within, the inner imaginal conversations with others from the premise of being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And so to go back to the inspiration of today's conversation, what she's doing reminds me of what Neville had mentioned in his Mental Diets lecture. He said, every time we exercise our imagination lovingly on behalf of another, we are literally mediating God to that one. Always use your imagination masterfully as a participant, not an onlooker. And by that it's meant, imagine yourself carrying on a conversation with your friend from the premise of being that love, having actualized that experience, what would it look like if it was true? The way I like to do it is what would I say to myself after I had that experience in which the relationship had played out ideally? Or it could be having a conversation with your friend the next day in which you said, that was a wonderful flow-based conversation. I experienced even more flow during our conversation. Even if you didn't believe that it occurred that way before, now is where all the power is, as he said, to exercise our imagination lovingly on behalf of another. Because as by doing so, we're literally mediating God to that one. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, knowing that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Others appear to reflect my state of being. Self-knowledge transcends the beliefs in mind. Thus knowing thyself, I allow the conception of thyself to be a true concept of self, 
to rearrange mine, which manifests as others appearing that way, the loving way, a mere reflection of being the love I am. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.